Welcome back to the core, everybody. It's time now for the softball end of our baseball softball doubleheader night. The baseball team lost 9-5 to New Hampton in the first game of their doubleheader, and the softball team loses 11-5 to to Crestwood. We're about ready to get going here in game number two of the doubleheader, and this will be the Crestwood lineup. Katie Chapman in right field, Madison Sickles in center, Kerrigan Hunziger at the designated player position, Riley Galvin will be at third, Emily Sickles the catcher, Lexi Henry in left field, Kaylee Thomas the pitcher, Michaela Wilchin at second, Bailey Balk is the shortstop, and Shana Kreena. Kreener plays first base for the Cadets. The Cadets are now three and one. The Vikings are now one and three. First pitch by Peyton Jurlid comes at 8.08, and it's outside to Katie Chapman, who was one for five in game number one. One ball, no strikes. Jurlid 0 and 1, six innings, six hits, three earned runs, four walks, and eight strikeouts. 1 0 delivery, ground ball, left field side, picked up there by Stahlberger, and a throw to first base, and on a bang bang play, Chapman retired 6 3, one down here in the first inning. That'll bring up Madison Sickles, who was one for five with an RBI in game number one of the doubleheader. Chick, the, or rather the Cadets won that one 11 to five. Vikings looking for the split here as the pitch goes inside. In fact, it hits Sickles. So Sickles becomes the game's first base runner for Crestwood. Kerrigan Hunziger will be the batter, who was three for five with an RBI in game number one. No score here in game number two, and we'll set the Viking defense here momentarily. The first pitch from Jerlin, fouled right side off the bat of Hunziger on the ground. No balls and one strike. In left field, Matty Eady. In center field, Tess Olinger. In right field, Lexi Lewenberger. At third base, Riley Monteith. At shortstop, Shelby Stahlberger. At second base, Ellie Shelton, and at first base, Leighton Eady. Lauren Eggert behind the plate, and Peyton Jurlid in the circle. As the first pitch swung on and missed, runner goes, and stealing second uncontested will be Madison Sickles, but Hunsiger now has a no-ball two-strike count on her. 0-2 with the runner at second, and one down. Jurla delivers, and a little swinging bunt up the third base side rolls foul. The ball's two strikes. Vikes were supposed to have a bit busier of a week than they were. It's a doubleheader here tonight against Crestwood. Something we didn't bring up during our uh, previous broadcast. The 0-2 delivery pitch goes low. One ball, two strikes. They were scheduled to go to Owine on Thursday night. But due to low numbers, Owine has canceled their varsity season. One ball, two strikes to count, and the pitch sails high on a riser from Jurlid. And it's two balls, two strikes. Kind of an unfortunate situation. Granted, Decora not doing great with the numbers situation, only 23 out, 8 through 12. But you go with the kids, you got the 2 2 delivery up for three balls and two strikes now with Riley Galvin in the on-deck circle. When you start to having to cancel varsity seasons, that's a good way for kids to get into things that aren't as positive as drill it throws high after ball four. So Sickles at second, Hunsinger at first, and Riley Galvin will be the batter. And running at first base will be Kaylee Henry for the designated player, Hunsiger. Henry, the pinch runner at first, Sickles is at second. Riley Galvin, who was 0 for 4 in game number 1, will be at the plate. Crestwood took game number 1 by an 11 to 5 margin. The pitch taken inside. Both runners go. Throw down to third base. Not in time. Galvin squared to bunt. And that caused enough confusion that Eggert couldn't get a toss to third base in time. So second and third with one down. It's 1-0 and oh on Galvin. And the pitch goes low. Two balls, no strikes now. Two 
Two and oh the count. On the cleanup hitter for Cresco. Ball gets by Eggert on the pitch in the dirt. Throw to the plate, not in time. Wild pitch scores Sickles. And moves Henry up to third. And the cadets draw first blood here in game number two. So a hit batter, a walk, and two wild pitches as well as two stolen bases. The cadet, cadets score without the benefit of a base hit. Runner at third, one down. The pitch high from Jerlin. For ball four. And Coach Randy Iverson out to chat with Peyton Jurlin, who's having a little bit of a trouble finding the strike zone as the entire infield and battery will be a part of the conversation. The ba scheduled batter is Emily Sickles, who was one for four with the triple and an RBI in game number one. Cadets won that one 11 to five. Vikes committed about uh, four errors in that ball game as well. So they weren't too kind to themselves. And Annika Vandekrull, who was the losing pitcher in game number one, will come into this game. Vandekrull, who is now one and two on the season, will get Peyton Jurlid. Jurlid lifted after only four batters. Two of them walked. One hit by a pitch. She got the first batter of the game on a ground out to short. And Vandekrull will be back in to face the cadets here. First and third with one in and one down here in the first inning of this softball doubleheader. Cadets, one game one, 11 to five. And Vandekrill completing her warm up tosses, and here we go. Of course, next game's in fact at Walk On next Monday before hosting Waverly Show Rock next Wednesday, and then. Four games at the Jessup Tournament a week from this weekend. Runner goes at first. Pitch taken out of the zone by Sickles. And Riley Galvin will take second uncontested. 1-0 the count. The 1-0 delivery rolled in there from Vandekrill. And it's two balls, no strikes. And it's awfully frustrating because you got defenders wanting to help you out. And you don't even know if... Uh, they can or not when you don't get the ball across the plate. Pitch swung on, popped up on the infield. Shelby Stahlberger at shortstop near the second base bag will make the catch. And that is the second out of the inning. Two down runners at second and third. And Lexi Henry, who was one for three in game number one, will be the batter. And the first pitch is inside, one ball, no strikes. So all things in considered, if the Vikes can get out of this with only one run, you have to consider it a little bit of a victory as Annika throws low, two balls, no strikes to count. 2-0 to delivery, swinging a foul at the plate. It's 2-1. And the pitch, sails high. Three balls and one strike to count. Got some action up in the Decora bullpen as well. That is Lizzie Hartman. The pitch outside, ball four. Three walks and a hit batter here in the first inning. And Kaylee Thomas will try to help her own cause. Thomas pitching here in game two for the cadets. 
did not bat in game number one. And the pitch gets away from Agert momentarily, but not enough to warrant runner advancement. And it's one ball, no strike. So what was plaguing Peyton Jurlid, also plaguing Annika Vandekrill. The pitch outside, two balls, no strikes to count now. Two zero in there for a strike, and it's two and one now. Vandekrill delivers pitch, nice off-speed pitch out in front was Thomas swinging and missing, and it's two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded, one in, two down, top of the first inning. One nothing Cadets, and the two-two delivery dropped in low. For three balls and two strikes now. So everyone will be moving here on the 3-2 pitch with two down. And it's low for ball four. So a base is loaded walk to Thomas scores Henry. That makes it a 2-0 lead for the Crestwood Cadets. Cadets have not hit the ball out of the infield. And leads by a 2 nothing margin. And since Thomas is the pitcher, a courtesy runner coming in for her. As Michaela Wilchin will come to the plate. Wilchin, the eighth batter of the inning. 2 nothing cadets lead it. As Hartman continues to throw in the Decorah bullpen. Vandekrill already in the pitch, low. One ball, no strikes. Pitch, low. Two balls, no strikes. Viking pitcher is unable to find the strike zone with the searchlight right now. 2 0, -oh, there's a strike, and it's 2 and 1. Two and one on Michaela Wilchin, a two nothing lead for the Cadets. The two one delivery, one hopper right back to Vandercrow and overhand toss over to Leighton Needy at first base and the side is out here in the first inning. Two runs, no hits, no errors, two and the base is left loaded in fact. We head to the bottom half of the first inning. It's the Cadets two and the Vikings coming to bat and the Vikings will bat this way. Now leading off will be pitcher Annika Vandekrull. Jurlid was scheduled to bat first, but Vandekrull will be the batter now. Shelby Stahlberger is at shortstop. Lexi Lewenberger in right field. Maddie Eady will be in left field. Ellie Shelton is at second base. Tess Olinger in center field. Leighton Eady at first base. Lauren Eggert. The catcher and Riley Monteith will be at third base. And that lineup will face Kaylee Thomas, freshman pitcher, making her second appearance. Her first start, four innings, six hits, five earned runs, one walk, and one strikeout. So the Vikes will have to come from behind if they want to get back into this one. They lost game one of the doubleheader 11 to five and trailing this one by a two to nothing margin. Vandekroll will lead things off here in the bottom of the first inning. This will be her first at bat of the year. In fact, I can't remember her having it at bat even last year. Vandercrow in from the right-hand side of the plate to face the freshman right-hander Thomas, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. Nothing at all on Lexi Henry in left. Madison Sickles in center and Katie Chapman in right. 
Riley Galvin at third, Bailey Balk at short, second base is Michaela Wilton at first base, Shana Creener pitch in there for a strike, nothing in two. Behind the plate is Emily Sickles and in the circle is Kaylee Thomas. 0-2 delivery taken for strike three. So Vandekrill down on strikes, one down here in inning number one. And the batter will be Shelby Stahlberger. Batting second, shortstop Shelby Stahlberger. Stahlberger did not bat in game number one. Senior shortstop just came back from soccer. They finished their season last Friday. So this is her first playing night of the season. The first pitch high to Shelbs heading to St. Thomas this fall. 1-0, swing and a foul back. One ball, one strike. Believe she's going to play some soccer up there. One ball, one strike to count. Thomas ready, 1-1. One, one. That one slipped out of her hands on a changeup, and it's taken high. Two balls, one strike to count. The 2-1 delivery. That drops in low for three balls and one strike now. 2-0 Crest, Crestwood. Four walks and a hit by a pitch in that first inning as Stahlberger waits back on the change and fouls it off right side and out of play to the right hand hitting Stahlberger. And it's three balls and two strikes now. One down here in the bottom of the first inning. 3-2 delivery and Stahlberger lays off the rise ball taking it high for ball four. So Shelby at first... One down for Lexi Lewenberger. Lewenberger was one for three in game number one of the doubleheader. Lewenberger's been swinging it pretty good in the early portion of this schedule. That's the first pitch high to Lexi. One ball, no strikes. Maddie Eady in the on-deck circle is sunset upon us or nearing here in Decorah. 1-0 delivery, that's in there for a strike, and it's one ball, one strike to count. Carly Marlowe alongside for moral support as usual. Good to see you as always, the 1-1. Ground ball towards first base, knocked down there at first base by Creener. She'll take two steps to her left and tag the bag for the second out here in the first inning. Stahlberger moves to second. She'll be there with two outs for Maddie Eady. It was 0 for 4 in game number 1. Only games of the week for Decora. That's the first pitch in there for a strike, nothing in one. Again, many of the schedules had Decora being at Owine on Thursday night, but Owine not participating in a varsity schedule this year. Change up grounded towards third. Fair ball picked up there by Riley Kelvin. Throws to first base, not in time. Stahlberger moves up to third. So the Vikes will have him at the corners with two down here in the first inning. It'll be up to Ellie Shelton to get things going here. Batting fifth, second baseman, Ellie Shelton. Shelton in from the right-hand side of the plate. Did not bat in game number one despite pitching. Maddie Eady will take off as pitch goes high. She'll take second uncontested as the throw went back to the circle. So it's 1-0 and now on Shelton with two runners in scoring position. 1-0 delivery, swing and a miss, set a changeup. One and one the count on Shelton. 1-1 one, one delivery, a little slow roller fielded by Thomas, an underhand fake to the plate, throw over to first base, and on a bang-bang play, Shelton retired 1-3, and that'll be that here in the first inning. A walk, a hit, and two runners left. We head to the top half of the second inning. It is a 2-0 lead for Crestwood. 9-1-2 and two due for Crestwood here in the top half of the second inning. Cadets did not hit the ball out of the infield. Four Viking walks, multiple cadet steals, and one hit by a pitch. Led to two runs scoring in the top half of the first inning. Bailey Bulk will lead things off here in the top half of the second inning. 
2-0 lead for the cadets as the first pitch sails high. One ball, no strikes. By the way, congratulations going out to the Decorah Boys Tennis Team, Class 1A State Champions. They expect it to be back in town about 9.30. If you want to head out to the Centrum Plaza, swing a foul back. It is one ball and one strike to count. One one delivery, change up in there for a strike. Nice offering there from Vandercrow, and it's one ball, two strikes now. Vandercrow ready, and the pitch drops in low. Vandercrow was the losing pitcher in game number one. Back at it here in game number two. Two two, outside. Three balls and two strikes. Top of the order and Katie Chapman on deck. 3-2 delivery, swing and a pop-up foul, right side out of play. So we'll do it again at three and two. Three and two on bulk. Top of the order and Chapman to follow. Here's a blooper up the middle and a running grab is made right behind the second base bag by Shelby Stahlberger at short and that's the first out here in the top of the second inning. So just like the first inning, the Vikes got the leadoff hitter retired as Katie Chapman will be the batter grounded to short her first time up. And she looks at a strike, nothing and one. Peyton Jurlid started the game for the Cora, faced four batters, walked two and hit one. And Jurlid warming up in the bullpen once again. 0-1 delivery, slipped out of the hands of Amanda Curl and rolled in there for a ball. One ball, one strike. One one delivery hit well towards cent left center field. And that one is going to be two hops and against the fence. Chapman will stand at second with a double. First ball to the outfield, a well hit ball off of Vandercroll, and Chapman is at second with one down. And Madison Sickles will be the batter. Sickles was hit by a pitch and scored in that first inning. The pitch, squaring to bunt as Sickles, pitch taken low. And it's one ball, no strikes. A 2-0 lead for Crestwood here in the top half of the second inning. Pitch swinging a pop-up foul. Directly behind home plate, it lands out of play. So one ball, one strike to count. Cadets looking for the sweep. They open up conference play last Thursday night, splitting with Charles City. 1-1 delivery, bunted foul. So it is one ball, two strikes now on Madison Sickles. One ball, two strikes to count. Pitch swung on, popped up, third base side foul territory. Eggert went after it but couldn't get there. So the count remains one ball, two strikes on Madison Sickles. One, two. Rolled in there. Two balls, two strikes. Vandercroll delivers in the pitch, an off speed pitch, swinging and missing as Sickles, and that's the second out here in the second inning. So two down and a runner at second, and the batter is Kerrigan Hunsiger. Hunsiger. Walked and scored in the first inning. Vandercroll delivers, and that one smacked into center field and a base hit. Rounding third and running through a stop sign was 
Chapman relay throw from Olinger to Shelton to Eggert, and Chapman is retired at the plate. 8-4-2 on the out at the plate after the Hunsiger single, and that's that here in the second inning. Two hits, one left. Bottom of the second we go, 2 nothing. Crestwood. Bottom of the second inning we go, a 2 nothing lead for Crestwood. Tess Olinger, Leighton Eady, and Lauren Eggert here in the bottom of the second inning. Vikes trying to avoid losing their fourth in a row after a season opening win against Kihai last week. Olinger, her first at bat of the summer. She'll look at a strike, nothing in one. Of course, Tess, part of that track team and she won four medals down at state. The pitch goes low, one ball and one strike. Of course, she was part of that distance medley relay championship, second place team in the sprint medley relay as well. Ran a better time than when they won it a year ago. Pitch swung on and fouled back. It's one ball, two strikes on Tess Olinger. A 2-0 lead for Crestwood as we play the bottom half of the second inning. Again, it'll be about an hour before the Decorah boys uh, tennis team back in town as Olinger rolls one towards second. Play made there by Maddie Wilchin. And she'll throw on to first base to retire Olinger. One down here in the second inning. One down, nobody on, and Leighton Eady will be the batter. Leighton in game number one was one for four. Thomas walked one, gave up a hit, but in that first inning, but got out of it with two ground balls and a strikeout. Pitch fouled off, off the bat of Edie. No balls, one strike. 0 1 delivery. Pitch goes high, one ball and one strike to count. One one delivery, swing and a pop up foul, right side not a play. That's one ball, two strikes. Tell you what, that iPod in this booth it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. For the klutzy guy like me in the booth, you never know. As the pitch goes high, two balls and two strikes on late needy. We're in the bottom of the second inning. It is a two nothing lead for Crestwood. They scored two runs without the benefit of the base hit in the first inning as the pitch goes high. Three balls, two strikes to count. Full count pitch from Thomas, swinging a foul back at a riser. So we'll do it again at three and two. Three two again, swing and a miss. Thomas went with the rise ball in the first three two pitch, then took a little something off and had Leighton Edie out in front for the second out of the inning. Two down, and Lauren Eggert will be the batter. Eggert 0 for three and a walk in game number one as the first pitch low from Thomas. One ball, no strikes the count. 1-0, pitch taken high, it's two balls and no strikes to count. One, 2 0 Thomas misses again. Thomas walked Stahlberger with one out in the bottom of the first inning. Flakes unable to make anything of it. Pitch a strike, it's 3-1 and one. now on Eggert. Three one, and uh, some heat there from Thomas swinging and missing is Eggert. It's now three balls and two strikes. With two down here in the second inning, Thomas looking for her first one two three inning, and Eggert swings and misses. Second strikeout for Kaylee Thomas, and that's that for the second inning. Three up, three down. We head to the top of the third. It's two nothing Crestwood. 
Top of the third inning we go. Glad you're with us tonight for a baseball softball doubleheader. Baseball game across the way. It's 2-0 New Hampton in the second inning. New Hampton won game one of that doubleheader. 9-5. Crestwood won game one of this doubleheader. 11-5 and... Leads it here in game two by a 2 nothing margin. Riley Galvin will look at a strike, nothing in one. Riley walked in the first inning. Emily Sickles and Lexi Henry to follow. Anacrol already 0-1, looped towards the third base side and a diving grab is made basket style at shortstop by Shelby Stahlberger. And there's one down here in the third inning. So, Stahlberger's Made her second or third above average play at shortstop. One down here in the third, and Emily Sickles will be the batter. Sickles popped a shorter first time up. Ground ball right side picked up there by Shelton on to first base and Leighton Edie for the second out of the third inning. Edie went for that ball on the backhand, didn't get it, but had the presence of mind to come back after Shelton retrieved it. So somebody was covering the bag, and that's the second out of the inning, and Lexi Henry will bat in a 2-0 Crestwood lead. Henry drew a walk in the first inning and looks at the first one low. One ball, no strikes. one -oh, smacked into center field, and a base hit. Henry with a two-out single here in the third inning, and the Cadets now with three hits on the night. Runner at first, two down, and Kaylee Thomas, the batter. She drew a bases loaded walk back in the first. First pitch low from Vandercroll. It got away from Eggert. In fact, she lost it momentarily, so up to second will go Henry. One ball, no strikes to count. One, oh, swung on, popped up, shallow right field coming on is Lexi Lewenberger. She will make a running grab to retire the sack. One hit, one left, two and a half done. It is 2-0 Crestwood. 9-1-2 and two due for Decora against Kaylee Thomas. First time through the order, she has struck out three, walked one, and given up one hit. Riley Monteith... Annika Vandekrill and Shelby Stahlberger here in the third inning for Decora. Riley Monteith. Bats from the right-hand side of the plate against the right-hander Thomas and looks at the first one high. One ball, no strikes. Thomas, since giving up that infield hit to Maddie Eady, has retired four in a row. The 1-0 drops low. It's two balls and no strikes to count. Two zero. Low for three balls, no strikes now. Thomas ready, 3-0. Taking all the way is Monteith, and she'll take a strike. Top of the order, and Vandercroll on deck. Second night of conference action for everybody here tonight as the pitch goes high for ball four. Monteith draws a leadoff walk. It's the first time Decor has gotten their leadoff runner on in this game. And re entering the game will be Peyton Jurlett. Gerlid will be the batter batting for Vandekrill here as she slaps its ones out in the right field for a base hit. Stopping at second is Riley Monteith, first and second with nobody out here in the third inning. So Gerlid re-entered at that time, batted for Vandekrill and got herself a base hit. We'll see if Gerlid returns to the circle in the top half of the fourth inning. Joby Stahlberger drew a walk in the first inning. She squares to Bunt, looks at the first one high, one ball, no strikes. Two nothing, Crestwood. Two on, nobody out here in the bottom of the third for Decora. The 
pitch high again. And Stolberger tried to put the bunt down on a rise ball, but wisely it laid off of it. It is two balls, no strikes. The count on Shelby Stolberger, 2-0. Bunt at third base side, picked up there by Galvin. Throws on to first base with Wilchin covering. Sacrifice good, 5-4. Smart money in that situation because Lexi Lewenberger has been your best hitter thus far. She now bats with two runners in scoring position. Lewenberger grounded to first in the first 0 for 1. Thomas delivers and the first pitch in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Crestwood got their two runs in the top of the first inning. The Vikes trying to fight back here in the bottom of the third. 0-1 delivery sails high for one ball, one strike on Lewenberger. One ball, one strike. Pitch taken low. Two balls and one strike from the freshman Thomas. This is actually one of two conference games tonight. Charles City is at Waverly Showrock. Here's ground ball up the middle. Fielded at short by Balk. She'll throw on to first base for the out. A run will score. Jurlid will move to third. Lewenberger gets the run home. She gets an RBI as Monte scores. And Jurlid moves to third. And Maddie Eady will have a two-out RBI opportunity for Decora. Eady got an infield hit back in the first inning. First pitch swung on, popped up towards second. Maddie Wilchin is under it, and she will make the catch. Correction, that's Michaela Wilchin making the catch, and the side is out here in the third. But the Vikes get one run, one hit, no errors, and one left. We are three complete. It is Crestwood leading 2-1. to one. Peyton Gerlid returns to the circle for Decora. She faced the first four batters of the game, walked two of them, hit another one, and has given up the two runs for Crestwood to this point. Crestwood with three hits, Decora with two. Neither team has committed an error to this point. It'll be hitters 8, 9, and 1 for the Cadets here in the fourth inning. Michaela Wilchin, Bailey Balk, and Katie Chapman to face Peyton Gerlid once again. A 2-1 lead. Vikes got a run home on the RBI ground out by Lexi Lewenberger to score Riley Monteith in the bottom of the third. The pitch goes low. 1-0 on Michaela Wilchin now. She grounded back to the pitcher, then Vandekrill, back in the first inning. Annika was the losing pitcher in game number one. Pitch swinging a foul back. It is one ball, one strike on Michaela Wilchin. And this is the only game, net, I should say, only date of the week for Decora. Scheduled to go to Owine on Thursday night, but Owine not competing in softball at the varsity level this year. The 1-1 one -one delivery, swinging a foul back. It's one ball, two strikes. Let's hope that's not something that becomes a trend. One ball, two strikes. Pitch from Jurla to change up Ooh, inside. Two balls, two strikes. And when you start losing high school activities, kids get creative in what they can do with their time, and that's normally not a good thing. Pitch swung on and missed. Jurla gets the strike out of Wilchin. One down here in the fourth inning. A 2-1 lead for Crestwood, and Bailey Bulk will be the batter. Ball popped out to short in the second, 0 for 1. Cadets won game 1, 11 to 5. Pitch well high from Jurlin. It is one ball, no strikes. one -0 delivery, well high again. Two balls, no strikes. Drew it bringing a lot of heat with that rise ball, but giving Lauren Eggert a lot of exercise behind the plate as well. 2-0, that one dropped in low. Two balls, or three balls and no strikes, rather. Crestwood got their two runs in the first inning. 
The 3-0 delivery, well high for ball, or wait a second, that was called a strike. That's the old automatic on 3-0. Balk was about ready to toss the bat away. Everybody else expected it, but the judge and jury had other ideas as the pitch swung on and fouled back. It is three balls and two strikes now. So Jurla trying to climb the ba ladder back against Balk. 3-2 delivery inside for ball four. Jurlid walks her second batter. Viking pitching walking their fifth batter. Runner at first, one down for the top of the order, and Katie Chapman, who looks at a strike. Nothing in a one. 2 1 Crestwood, top of the fourth. Chapman grounded to short in the first and doubled in the second. Drillard trying to keep the cadets at bay. The pitch sails high. Got away from Eggert, but Bulk was heading back to first base. Fly ball center field running grab made in shallow center by Tess Olinger. And that's the second out of the inning. So Chapman hit one well, but Olinger up to the task out in center. Two down and a runner at first for Madison Sickles. The pitch, swing and a miss. The ball's one strike on Sickles. Sickles was hit by a pitch and scored in the first inning and struck out swinging in the second. Oh one, well high. One ball, one strike. One and one on Sickles as pitch goes low. Two balls, one strike. Sickles, the daughter of head coach Doug Sickles, has had a heck of a career as a cadet athlete. Two-time All-State player in basketball for cadets who qualified for state two years in a row. And here's a pop-up first base side. And retreating his late needing, she will make the catch to retire the side. A walk and a runner left. Cadets have left six through four. Halfway home in game two of the doubleheader. It is a 2-1 lead for Crestwood. Ellie Shelton, Tess Olinger, and Leighton Needy here in the bottom of the fourth inning for Decora trailing two to one. Thomas throws outside to Shelton, one ball, new strikes. The pitch swung on and missed. It is one and one the count on Shelton now. Shelton grounded to the pitcher, Thomas, to end things in the first inning. One, one. In there for a strike, and it's one ball, two strikes on Shelton. Bikes trail by a run here in the bottom of the fourth inning as the pitch goes low, two balls and two strikes. Cadets got two runs without the benefit of a base hit in the top of the first inning. Bikes got one back on an RBI, ground out by Lewenberger in the third, and the pitch in outside corner for strike three called. Shelton down and on strikes, and that's the fourth strikeout for Kaylee Thomas. One down here in inning number four. And the batter is Tess Olinger. Olinger grounded to second her first time up, and that one popped straight back and foul, but Emily Sickles, the catcher, didn't see it in time, and it lands harmlessly foul. No balls and one strike to count. Oh, one one delivery. That one rolled in low. One ball, one strike. Thomas has had one, one, two, three inning. That was back in the second. She allowed five runners on in the 
Face five runners in the first, fly ball right field side. Angling over is the right fielder Chapman who makes the catch for the second out of the inning. That's the fifth consecutive batter Thomas has knocked down. That's her longest retired batter streak of the game. There is two down here in the fourth inning. And the batter is Leighton Eady, who struck out swinging in the second. She'll swing at the first one, ground one towards third, and a foul ball. Pass to lunging Riley Gelvin at third, but Gelvin was right on the line. And it was to her right. No balls, one strike to count. Developing into a decent softball game here in game two as that one smacked into center on a base hit. Late Needy with a single to center. So she's on with two down here in the fourth inning. And Lauren Eggert will get a chance. Eggert struck out swing in the second 0 for 1. Bikes lost game one by an 11 to 5 margin. And they trail it here in game two as the pitch. Outside, one ball and no strike. That's the count on Eggert. one -0 delivery. Swung on, popped up. First base side foul. And that one will land on the roof of the cadet dugout, which is just to the left of our vantage point. One ball, one strike the count. One one foul ball first base side over the first base dugout and out of play. So one and two now on Eggert as she pops one first base side over towards the first base side in foul ground. Sheena Creener will dive and make the catch, and that'll be the third out here in the fourth inning. Nice play by Creener at first base. One down or one hit and one left. We are four complete. And it is 2-1 Crestwood. Top of the fifth inning we go. It's a 2-1 lead for Crestwood. Peyton Jurlid on for her second stint of the game. She faced the first four batters. Hit one, walked two. Allowed two of those runs to score. She came back in in the fourth inning after Vandekrill. Put out the fire for the moment. She walked one with one out, but got everybody else retired. Ker Kerrigan Hunsiger will be the batter. She walked and scored in that first inning and singled in the second inning. On that play, Katie Chapman was thrown out at the plate from Olinger to Shelton to Eggert behind the plate. As Hunsiger looks at a strike, nothing going to want. This is Vikings Radio 1240 KDEC to Corin, KDEC Radio.com. Darren Swenson doing Decora softball tonight. Pop flies shallow right. Shelton is out and she drops it. Shelton was under that ball, called off Lewenberger, but couldn't corral it, and that's the first defensive miscue of the night. And a pinch runner coming in for. Hunsiger. Unfortunately, uh, with the short time between games, wasn't uh, privy to a roster, so. Can't tell you who it is. A runner at first, nobody out, and Riley Galvin will be the batter, and she'll look at the first one high from Peyton Jurlin. One ball, no strikes. Galvin walked in that first inning and popped a short in the third. one -0 delivery, squaring the bunt and taking the pitch low is Galvin. It is two balls, no strikes to count.
Gerlid gets the ball back, walks a little bit behind the circle, slams the ball into her glove, now winds up and pitches and hits Galvin. So runners at first and second now with nobody out, and the batter is Emily Sickles as the cadets look to add on to their 2-1 to one advantage. Sickles popped a short in the first, grounded a second in the third. And Sickles bunts up the first base side. They're going to pick it up in foul territory. No balls in one strike. That was a rise ball coming in on the hands of Emily Sickles. and Kind of an awkward angle to try to get the bunt down. No balls, one strike to count on Emily Sickles. 0-1 delivery, punted up the middle, picked up there by Gerlid, and she'll throw a strike to Ellie Shelton at first base, covering the bag to retire Sickles, but she'll move two runners up on the play. Runners at second and third with one down for Lexi Henry, who's been on base twice tonight. Cadets lead it 2-1 here in the top half of the fifth inning. Henry walked in the first and singled in the third, pitch Outside, one ball, no strikes. This is the first time she will face Peyton Jurlett in this game. Her other at bats against Annika Vandekrol. 1 0 delivery, low and inside for two balls, no strikes now. Some heat and a swing and a miss by Henry. It's two balls and one strike now. We're in the fifth inning. Cadets leading by a 2-1 margin and looking for more. A pitch well high from Lexi Henry. It's three balls and one strike now. Three one, well high ball four, and the runners will stay put as the ball got by Egert, but she played the carom well to avoid runner advancement. Now the base is loaded with one down and Kaylee Thomas with an opportunity to help her own cause. Thomas, bases loaded, walk in the first and flew out to right in the third. First pitch to Thomas, swinging a foul back. Cadets trying to get some tallies on the board for the first time since the first inning. Oh, one delivery, change up. That one taken low. And slow pitch softball, it would have been a strike, but... That playing slow pitch. One ball, one strike to count. 1-1 one, one delivery sails high for two balls and one strike now on Kaylee Thomas. Base is loaded, so the infield up. Pitch low and inside for three balls, one strike on Thomas. No place to put Thomas as Peyton throws a strike on the outside edge. It's now three and two on Kaylee Thomas. Bases loaded, one down. Infield up at all four spots for Decora, trailing two one to Crestwood. And the pitch well high for ball four. So an RBI the easy way for the second time tonight for. Kaylee Thomas, she draws her second bases loaded walk, and the Cadets go up 3-1. Up next, second baseman, Michaela Wilchin. Michaela Wilchin will look to keep the fun going. Wilchin grounded to the pitcher to end the first and struck out swinging to start the fourth. 
A 3-1 lead for Crestwood. They're in the top half of the fifth inning. The pitch swung on, popped up on the infield. And Jurlid will pick it up. And sleeping at first base was the runner. And, and it'll end up being an easy double play. So Wilchin pops out. The courtesy runner for Thomas was halfway between first and second. It ends up being an easy double play. So out of all that, one run, zero hits. One error and two runners left on base. We head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. The Cadets leading by a 3-1 margin. It's a lead of 3-1 to one for the Crestwood Cadets. They have three hits. Decora has three hits. Decora with the lone error to this point. Riley Monte through walked and scored in the third inning. Swings and misses at the first one from Kaylee Thomas. No balls and one strike. Thomas through four innings. Has given up the three hits, the one run. The 0 1 delivery is well high for one ball, one strike. Monteith, the number nine hitter in the lineup. One one. Pitch taken low, two balls, one strike. Thomas has walked two and has struck out four. Thomas ready, and the pitch swinging a foul. That one went off the mask of the catcher, Emily Sickles. So it's two balls, two strikes now. Two and two from Thomas in the pitch. Outside corner taken for strike three. So one down and nobody on, and the batter will be Peyton Jurlid. Jurlid, you're only at bat of the game, single to right in the third. The pitch goes high. One ball, no strikes. Shelby Stahlberger on deck as that one hit well out in the left field, retreating as Lexi Henry. She will make the catch for the second out here in the fifth inning. So two down, nobody on, and the batter is Shelby Stolberger. A 3-1 lead for the Cadets here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Stolberger walked in the first, sacrificed in the third as the pitch goes low. One ball, no strikes. one -oh. Outside, two balls, no strikes. Thomas is yet to have a one, two, three inning. I take that back, one happened in the second. As that one grounded up the middle and through for a base hit. Shelby Stolberger. Now one for one with a walk and a sacrifice. And Lexi... Lewenberger will look to keep the inning going. Lewenberger representing the tying run. She has the lone RBI of the night. Has the pitch in there for a strike, nothing and one. Lewenberger grounded to first in the first, grounded to short to knock in a run in the third. 0-1, runner goes, pitch taken low, throw down to second base, and Shelbs is in there. One ball, one strike, count. One one swung on and missed on a good drop ball from Thomas, and now it's one ball, two strikes to count. One and two, the count and the pitch swung on and missed on a very good changeup by Thomas. One hit, one left, five done, three one Crestwood. Top of the sixth inning we go. It's 
A strike to Bailey Bulk to start things from Peyton Jurlid. A 3-1 lead for the Crestwood Cadets. Two in the first and one in the fifth for Crestwood. Bikes got their lone run in the bottom of the third inning. Pitch looped up the right field side, but foul. It is no balls and two strikes to count on Bailey Bulk. We are in the top of the sixth inning here at softball with Crestwood leading 3-1. We are also in the top of the sixth inning over at the baseball diamond with New Hampton leading 3-1 in that game. Katie Chapman and Madison Sickles to follow here in the sixth inning as that one rolled up the middle and through for a base hit. So Balk now has been on base two of the three times she has been up after having popped a short in the second and walked in the fourth. A runner at first, nobody out. Katie Chapman will be the batter. Chapman grounded to short in the first, doubled in the second, and lined out to center in the fourth. The first pitch taken up. One ball, no strikes to count on Chapman. One zero delivery. Swung on, fly ball, shallow center field. Coming in is Tess Olinger, and she will make the catch for the first out here in the sixth inning. One on, one out for Madison Sickles. One on, one out. Here's a looper, first base side. And trying to let it go foul was Leighton Edie. And she'll throw to first base. And the throw got by Ellie Shelton. And it'll be runners at first and third with one down. So we'll give Madison Sickles a single. And moving up to third on the errant throw is Bailey Balk. So it's a single and an error. And a pinch runner will be at third for the cadets. And it'll be first and third with one down. That's one of those things where Edie was going to let that one roll foul, but it landed in front of her before Sickles was even to the point where it landed. Of course, it's a heck of a lot easy for me to say up here, but if Leighton picks that up, one up, she can apply a pretty easy tag there. First and third, one down for Kerrigan Hunsaker. Walked and scored in the first, singled in the second, reached on an error and scored in the fifth. Runner goes from first sickles and the pitch rolled in. To Hunsker, one ball, no strikes to count. one -o delivery, swing and a miss. It is one ball, one strike to count on Hunsker. One one in there for a strike and it's one and two. Peyton was able to pitch her way out of some trouble in the fifth inning. Perhaps it's one of those deals where Peyton gets more comfortable the bigger jam she's in as the rise ball goes high for two balls, two strikes. Two and two the count. Jurla delivers and the pitch rolled foul, first base side. Two and two the count remains on Hunsiger. Only one out, two runners in scoring position for the cadets. Looking for a double header sweep here on a Tuesday night in Decora. 2-2. Outside from Druid. Three balls, two strikes to count on Hunsaker. Druid 
Sherwood ready, 3-2. Swung on, looped foul, first base side, out of play. So Hunsker battling well. The next pitch will be the eighth pitch of this at bat. Three and two the count. Swing and a foul back to the screen, so the battle continues between Jurlid and Hunsiger. Three balls and two strikes. Three two delivery, low for ball four. So a well-earned base on balls from Hunsiger. A result of a nine pitch at bat. We have a deer that's sitting on the dike out in left field. Everybody else paid their admission. Apparently they can't. Pitch outside to Riley Gelvin. Gelvin walked in the first, popped a short in the third and hit by a pitch in the fifth. It, perhaps the same deer that uh, was escaped from the soccer net behind the high school the other day as Randy Iverson out to talk to his team in the pitching circle. One ball, no strikes. The count on Riley Gelvin. Bases loaded. One down. Cadets trying to break this game wide open. They lead it 3-1 as Riley looks at a strike. And it's three. It's one ball, one strike on Gelvin. One one. Swing and a miss. Good gas from Jerlin, and it's one ball, two strikes now. Starting to cool down reasonably well here in Decor. The one-two delivery, ooh, boy, just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Was just beneath the knees on the outside edge. But not good enough, and Peyton's been wild enough that she isn't going to get the 50-50 calls. The two-two delivery. One hopper right back to Drillet. She's going to go to the plate for the first out, and that's the only out they will get, but they will keep the three in the run total on the board. So Balk retired 1-2 at the plate. And there's two down. And the bases remain loaded for Emily Sickles. Sickles 0 for 2 with the sacrifice. Ball gets by Eggert on a pitch in the dirt. Scoring from third is Madison Sickles. And on the wild pitch, the Cadets make it a 4-1 lead. Hunsiger moves to third and Galvin to second. Pitch, swing and a foul. Right side and out of play, so it's one ball, one strike on Emily Sickles. 0 for 2 with the sacrifice tonight. If you're looking ahead to the Vikings, 6, they will have the middle of the third of the order. Maddie Eady, Ellie Shelton, and Tess Olinger. Pitch goes high from Peyton Gerlin. It's two balls and one strike count over at baseball. A 6-1 lead for New Hampton in the sixth. The pitch swing and a foul right side out of play. So it's two balls, two strikes on Emily Sickles. Deuce is wild on the Crestwood catcher. Bikes trying to avoid any further damage. They trail it 4-1. 2-2 delivery, changeup taken high for three balls and two strikes now. The 
pitch, swing and a foul back, so we're still at three balls, two strikes. Drill it ready, pitch outside corner, strike three, call. So one run on one hit, no errors, and two runners left on base. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 4-1 Crestwood. Matty Eady looks at a strike to start things here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Eady an infield hit in the first and a pop out to second in the third. Pitch in there for a strike. Or out of the zone, I should say. One ball, one strike to count. Pitch swing and a foul at the plate. So it's one ball, two strikes on Matty Eady. Thomas delivers the 1-2 taken low. And it's two balls, two strikes. The pitch high, three balls, two strikes. The count on Matty Eady. A 4-1 advantage for Crestwood as the pitch swung on a fly ball out to right center field. That one will land for a base hit. Edie with the turnaround first base. She'll stay put right there. So Edie with a two for three night and the Vikes now with a total of five hits. In fact, they are out hitting Crestwood five to four. Ellie Shelton will be the batter. It's first pitch taken low. It is one ball, no strikes. One zero -oh, swung on a ground bow right back to Thomas. Fields it on one hop, and a throw over to first base to retire Shelton. And Matty Eady moves up to second on the play with one down. And the batter will be Tess Olinger. Olinger grounded to second in the second and flew out to right in the fourth. She'll foul one right side and out of play. There's no balls and one strike. By the way, if you're tuning in the, in the decor area and hear some sirens soon, that'll be your boys tennis team state champions. About ready to get picked up out at Centrum Plaza. 0-1 delivery taken high. One ball, one strike to count. 1-1 one, one delivery. That one dropped in low. It's two balls, one strike on Tessa Olinger. Two one, swung on, ground ball right side field at second by Wilchin. Throws on to first base to retire Olinger. Edie moves up to third on the play with two down. Pitch outside to Leighton Edie. One ball, no strikes. Maddie at third with two down here in the sixth inning. A 4-1 lead for Crestwood. The pitch ground ball left side and through for a base hit. Maddie Eady will score on the Leighton Eady single to left. Leighton now two for three on the night. And it's a 4-2 ball game. And the tying run will come to the plate in the person of Lauren Eggert. Eggert struck out swinging in the second inning and fouled to first in the fourth. Pitch outside to Lauren Egger. One ball, no strikes. 1-0 delivery. Swung on a ground ball toward short. Bobbled there at short by Bulk. Everyone will be safe. Crestwood commits their first defensive 
Miscue of the night, Edie to second. And Ager to first, and Riley Monteith will come to the plate. And it will be a pinch runner coming in for Decora. I think it's going to be Katie Nimrod running at first base for Decora. And Haley Nearling will be a pinch hitter for Riley Monteith now. Haley Nearling will pinch hit with runners at first and second and two down. First pitch to Haley is outside. One ball, no strikes. Bikes trying to get some two out magic to happen here as they trail it four to two. The pitch swinging a foul back. One ball, one strike to count. Thomas ready, 1-1. One, one. Sails high for two balls and one strike on Haley nearly. Pitch. Inside and low, it's three balls and one strike now. Pitch swung on, fly ball, right center field. After it is Madison Sickles, and Sickles will make the catch to retire the sack. One run, two hits, one error, and two left. Seventh inning we go, it's 4-2 Crestwood. Top of the seventh inning we go, Lexi Henry, Henry, Kaylee Thomas, and Michaela Wilchin here for Crestwood leading 4-2. They won game one of the doubleheader by an 11-5 margin. Peyton Jurla delivers and a swing and a miss from Henry. Henry has walked in the first, singled in the third, and walked again in the fifth. No balls, one strike, and the pitch swung out and missed at a riser, and it's no balls, two strikes now. Decora in the seventh will have the top of the order up. O2 delivery, swing and a miss, strike three. A good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And Jurlid gets the strikeout. In her time in the game, that is strikeout number three. One down, nobody on for Haley Thomas. Thomas swings and misses at the first one from Jurlid. No balls and one strike. Thomas walked with the bases loaded in the first, flew out to right in the third, and walked again in the fifth. Two of the four runs have scored with the bases loaded. Here's a roller out in the right field and a base hit. Thomas gets on with a single to right. And Michaela Wilchin will be the batter. One on, one out here in the seventh inning. One on, one out. Michaela Wilchin will be the batter. Wilchin walked in the first, struck out swinging in the fourth, and popped to the pitcher in the fifth. First pitch to Wilchin, outside corner for a strike, nothing and one. Again, DeCora will have the top of the order up. Cadets got two runs in the first inning. One on a wild pitch, one on a bases loaded walk. Another bases loaded walk, there's a run in the fifth, and a, another wild pitch scores one in the sixth. Foul ball up the first base side. No balls and one, one two strikes to count on Michaela Wilchin. 0-2 oh with one down. Oh 
Bailey Balk in the on-deck circle. The 0-2 delivery, a changeup that's taken high. One ball, two strikes to count. One and two. And here we go. The 1-2 delivery, high and all the way back to the screen. Thomas will move up to second base on the wild pitch. Two balls, two strikes to count. Two-two delivery, well high from Jurlett. It's three balls and two strikes now. Jurlid ready, and the 3-2 offering inside for ball four. So first and second with one down here in the top of the seventh inning. Up next, shortstop, Bailey Balk. And Bailey Balk will be the batter. Balk popped a short in the second, walked in the fourth, and singled in the si six as pitch goes low from Jurlid. One ball, no strikes. Gerlid started and is finishing up this game as the pitch goes high. It is two balls and no strikes to count. Two zero. Swung on fly ball right field coming in as Lewenberger. She will make the catch, and that's the second out of the inning. Two down, two on, and the batter is Katie Chapman. Chapman grounded to short in the first, doubled in the second, lined out to center in the fourth, and fly, flew out to center in the sixth. So first and second with two down. Crestwood clinging to a 4-2 lead as Chapman hits a line drive right at Ellie Shelton, and that's that for the seventh inning. A hit and two left. Bikes need two to keep this thing going. They trail at 4-2, going to the bottom of the seventh. Peyton Jurlett will try to start a rally here in the bottom of the seventh. Bikes trail at 4-2. As the pitch to Jurlett is on the outside edge for a strike. Jurlett one for two in the game. Single to right in the third and flew out to left in the fifth inning. Vandekrill batted in this spot and struck out looking in the first and the pitch in there for a strike. And it's no balls and two strikes the count on Peyton Jurlett. Oh, two delivery, well high from Thomas. It is one ball and two strikes the count. One, two, pitch goes low. Two balls, two strikes to count. Two and two, the count from Thomas. The pitch swinging a foul back. So the count remains two balls, two strikes on Peyton Jurlett, trying to battle back, trailing 4 2 here in the seventh inning. Trying to avoid the doubleheader sweep tonight. And the pitch swung on a ground ball up the middle and through for a base hit. Jurlid reaches to start things here in the seventh. Runner at first, nobody out. Shelby Stahlberger, the batter, walked in the first Sacrificed in the third and singled in the fifth. Pitch outside. One ball, new strikes to count on Stolberger. 1 0 delivery. Ground ball towards second base. Jurlid will be out of the baseline and it'll be a fielder's choice. Stolberger will reach four unassisted. One down here in the seventh inning. One down, nobody on. Or a runner.
runner at first, I should say, for Lexi Lewenberger. Lewenberger is 0 for 3 with an RBI on the night. 4-2 Crestwood here in the seventh. First pitch low from Thomas. One ball, new strikes. And we'll have our tennis ceremony here pretty soon, so I'll probably leave the air as soon as possible here so as the pitch goes outside. Two balls, new strikes on Lewenberger. Two old. Pitch swung on one half right back to Thomas. She'll throw on to first base and Creener, and there's two down here in the seventh inning. Two down, runner at second. A 4-2 lead for the Cadets, and the last hope for the moment for Decora is Maddie Eady. She is two for three here on the ninth. Single in the first, popped to second in the third, and singled and scored in the sixth, and she'll look at a strike, nothing in one. One change up swung on and missed, and it's no balls and two strikes now. Oh, and two, Thomas trying to close it out. Oh, two delivery swung on and missed at a pitch in the dirt. The ball got by the catcher's sickle, so Edie will reach runners at first and third with two down. And the batter will be Ellie Shelton. Tying run on base for Decora. They trail at 4-2. And Ellie Shelton will be the batter for Decora. It looks like Decora will go with a pinch runner at first base. Riley Hubka will run at first base for Decora. First and third with two down. Crestwood leading 4-2. And Ellie Shelton will stand in. Shelton swings and misses at the first one as Hubka will take second uncontested. So now the tying run and scoring position for Decora. 0-1 to Shelton High, one ball, one strike to count. One one. Ground ball towards short. Picked up there by Bailey Balk on to first base, and the cadets get the doubleheader sweep four to two. <laughs> 